my name is Mike Gabe and welcome to my KSP campaign. What we have here is the Korion 3 docking with Yoi Station. The crew of which has a mission to support the connection of a D-class asteroid to the station. But said mission is in need of further support vehicles which won't be arriving until next episode. This episode's events will completely center around EVE. We have the arrival of the EVE-1, which has a mission to map EVE, as well as a couple of landers that we hope to drop successfully down to the surface. But I think the main event will be the arrival of the Kegel-7, a lander. The plan is to rendezvous it with the crew of the Kermes-2 above EVE's moon Gilly, and do some crude exploration of the surface. So, without any further ado, let's get ourselves to EVE where we find the Kermes 2 streaking through Eve's near space for the final time before making a 13 meter per second burn to set up our Gilly encounter. Billtop couldn't resist the opportunity for one last bit of science collecting, but the burn is coming up soon, so we'd best get him aboard. I've tweaked down the max thrust to 70% because the balance issues that I was having last episode but as this is such a tiny burn, I'll still keep the throttle below half. There's no need for a lot of thrust. I'm watching this through map view. Gilly's sphere of influence is so small, I want to make sure that I don't miss it. Alright, we're closing in on it. Okay, we'll be at the diminutive moon in nine and a half days. But in the meantime... There are others going on about Eve that require our attention. Number one being the Kegel 7. Oh, it looks like we're going to be treated to an Eve sunrise. The Kegel 7 is just about to make its capture burn and oh, oh, I just noticed, uh, we just lost our connection. We must be in the communication shadow, that's not a problem because the burn had already been set up in the remote tech flight computer, so the flight computer was going to be executing this burn, whether we had a connection or not. This is going to leave it in an eccentric orbit with an apoapsis that will more or less be around Gilly's orbit. Like all my Kegels, this is a crude lander that I want to get to Gilly and the Kermes too as quickly as I can so that the crew can use it to get down to the surface. The orbit that resulted from this wasn't bad, but it was a bit inclined, so I'm going to need to make a maneuver out here at the relative ascending node to match inclinations with Gilly to facilitate us getting a capture. We've learned that Gilly is a very small target and not the easiest thing to hit, but it looks like I might get lucky here. Yes, there it is! We'll be getting to Gilly in just about eight and a half days, not too long after the Kermes gets there. Great, and there's no need to wait any more orbits. And just a couple of days later, the last of our E flotilla arrived at the Purple Planet. Okay, we've just entered E's sphere of influence. Our closest approach to Eve is 448 kilometers with an inclination of 86 degrees. That's not far off from what I need it to be for the orbital parameters for this ScanSat contract. Oh, hang on. Got something in red. Yeah, it says I need the Scan Radar Altimetry Sensor, which is the Tier 1 scanner, but I'm pretty sure, yep. This is the Scan SAR Altimetry Sensor, which is the higher tiered one. Shoot! I guess there's no way to fulfill this contract. My equipment is too good. Oh, who cares? I don't need these contracts anymore. I do have a communication contract and a biome scan contract. I should still be able to get those. By the way, this is the EVE-1, a communication slash mapping satellite, which also has two landers that in the meantime should be able to act as temporary communication satellites, allowing me to complete a complete network about EVE. I can see I've got the Infernal Robotics glitch happening when you attach decouplers to Infernal Robotics parts. Well, it doesn't look too bad. Most of the lander looks fine. It's just the engine shroud that is glitched away from the rest of the vehicle. I wonder what will happen if I try to move the hinge. I'll move the window over to here. That's oh, not working. 
Must be the other way. There we go. Oh, oh. This just feels like I'm inviting the Kraken. <laughs> I think I better just leave all this alone. Because of the light delay from Kerbin, the remote tech flight computer will be handling the burn. But look closely at the countdown pips on the nav ball, provided by better burn time. The flight computer started to burn early. That's because it thinks the burn will take longer than it will. Like the stock game, it calculates burn time wrong and overestimates the time needed every time. I've not gone into the math of this, but I suspect it is using the current acceleration of the vessel to calculate how long it will take to perform the burn, but that is incorrect. This is because as we burn fuel, we lose mass, but the thrust of our engine remains the same. This means that our acceleration increases the whole time while we are burning. Stock and the flight computer doesn't appear to take this into account, hence the need for mods like better burn time. Remote tech still burns for the correct amount of time because it stops the burn when the maneuver node is done, not when a certain amount of time has passed. It just starts that burn early. In this case it isn't a big deal, but for burns that are much larger than this, it can really mess things up. I'm eventually going for a 450 km circular orbit for the EVE-1 and its two probes. But I want the three satellites to be equally spaced in that orbit, so right now I'm going for a phasing orbit. A 450 km orbit about EVE has a period of 2,711 seconds. I'm going to give the phasing orbit a period that is four-thirds of that, which is 3,615 seconds. To get that, I need to stop this burn when my apoapsis hits 936.5 kilometers. If you want to learn how to calculate this for yourself, I do have some videos on the topic. Of course, the burn is being handled by the flight computer, so we'll just have to wait and see what we have once the computer stops the burn. Some of you may be thinking, shouldn't you be doing this burn much closer to Eve to take advantage of the O-Birth effect? and then perform a second burn to get the orbit that you want? After all, that is exactly what I did for the two satellites I have around MOHO. Well, the Oberth effect is a tricky thing. You don't always want to take advantage of it. It turns out around EVE that the amount I save using the Oberth effect would be less than the amount that I would spend readjusting the orbit afterwards. For MOHO, the opposite is true. There's a couple of factors that play into this, but the biggest is your speed relative to the object about which you are trying to get your capture. And around MOHO, the relative speed is much greater because we have fallen all the way from Kerbin's orbit. Going to EVE, which is much closer to Kerbin than MOHO, generates less speed. Okay, how we do? Apoapsis 937 kilometers, periapsis 449.5 kilometers. Well, I'm sure that's good enough. Let's drop our first probe. Ooh. Ooh, okay, seems all right. We're glitching right through that engine shroud. <laughs> uh, but everything, the probe itself seems okay. I have communication because there is antennas built into the probe bodies and we'll just extend this antenna. And the next time we are at periapsis, I just circularize this guy. Alright, that's definitely looking good enough. And then we'll go around again and we'll repeat this with the second probe. Taking a look at the result, we can see that the two probes are separated about about a third of an orbit. That's perfect. Oh, the second satellite is just called the Eve 1 probe. I should rename it. All right, Eve 1, Pro 1, 1. There we go, and it's a lander. All right, that's good. Uh-oh, I don't have any communication. The communitron should easily have the range. Uh, am I too close to the planet? I do not think there's a line of sight between the two satellites. Nope, it doesn't look like it. Shoot, of course not. The altitude of a communication network needs to be at least as high as the radius of the parent body, which for EVE is 700 kilometers and this is a 450 kilometer orbit. This won't do. 
So I decided to push the probe up to an 800 kilometer orbit. Meanwhile, I circularized the main vessel so that it can continue with its mapping. And after re-establishing communications with the first probe, I pushed it into an 80 kilometer or, or 800 kilometer orbit too. Ugh, so much for all my carefully laid math. Well, once Eve is all mapped, I'll move the main vessel up to 800 kilometers for the communications contract. I think I should be able to get this all to work. But with that all done, look who's at Gilly. I was originally thinking of going into a polar orbit to facilitate collecting science over different biomes, but then decided to go equatorial as it makes the trans carbon injection burden easier once we're done here. What's interesting is that, although our altitude is under 14 kilometers, we are still in high space. Once I had my capture, I brought my periapsis down to 7.5 kilometers in an effort to get some near space science. But once below 8 kilometers, I found I couldn't time warp anymore. And I still didn't get to near space. All the hell with this. We'll get some near space when we go for our landing. Speaking of which, a day later, our lander arrived. That waypoint you see there is the Kermes. We are so close. I went with a more traditional rendezvous, but honestly, Gilly's gravity well is so shallow, I likely could have just flown straight at it. Like here, my orbital velocity is only about 15 meters per second. Gilly might as well not even be here. We're 15 meters per second away from this being flat space. Once rendezvoused, I EVA Tamley over to fly to Kegel Inn for a docking. This dish antenna isn't needed anymore. I just have it attached to the docking port, so I'll decouple. Uh-oh. That's a probe body flying off. The antenna was supposed to be attached to it, but I guess not. Oh, no worries. That's what engineers and Kerbal Attachment System are for. I could have originally attached the dish antenna to the side, which would have made this all unnecessary, but there really is no need for the antenna anyway. I won't be remote flying the Kegel anymore now that it is here. The Kegel still had about 2 kilometers per second of Delta V in it, so I transferred most of the remaining liquid fuel into the Kermes to be used for the voyage home. The original plan was to ditch the transfer vehicle and land using nothing but RCS thruster blocks. A ghillie landing only takes about 30 meters per second of delta V and you certainly don't need much thrust. But even after taking out all that fuel, there's still 293 meters per second of delta V in the stage. I uh, might as well use it. What the heck with this? I was going to come around Gilly before starting my descent to pick a nice spot in the light, but even at t max time warp, this is going to take too long. I've got fuel to spare, so I'm just putting it down now. Got trajectories on, so oh, there's my red X. Can come a little bit more into the daylight here. Oh, I think that's looking pretty good. It's rather hard to gauge the slope of the land, but with Gilly's extremely low gravity and our ample fuel, we should be able to deal with whatever we find down there. We just transferred from Highlands to Midlands. Second landing in the Highlands I think would be a good idea. I'm thinking around here, at least it's in the sunlight, because it certainly looks like we're going to be landing in the dark right now. It's funny, we're still in high space despite being less than four kilometers above the surface. You may also be noticing that we have no communication with Mission Control. My impatience had me picking a landing site that is in Kerbin's communication shadow. With the Kermi still being more or less straight above us, it's in no position to relay a signal home. Oh, that just means we won't be able to transmit any of the science we collect. Oh well. Now, under eight kilometers, I've also lost the ability to time warp. Despite being more than six minutes from impact, the game thinks I'm too close to the ground. Oh my gosh, this is going to take a long time. No, no, forget it. Here, let's, let's get this done. I'm going to point myself to the horizontal here. We'll just start knocking off our horizontal velocity. 
get ourselves just falling straight down. That should help to speed things along. So I'm just watching my horizontal speed with uh, Kerbal Engineer. That starts getting close to zero. I know that is going to be it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's good. All right, we are now four minutes from impact. You know, part of me feels like just pointing straight down and burning and really speeding this up. It's only my pseudo sense of realism that has me not doing it. And I don't think it's something a NASA astronaut would do. Near space, finally! <laughs> Looks like six kilometers is the threshold. I'm so glad I abandoned the idea of a near space orbit for science collection. Being forced to always stay at one time speed would have driven me batty. Wow, 144 science for that gravity scan. These are not insignificant numbers. And we'll be able to duplicate all this once we're in the highlands. We're less than two minutes from impact now. We'll just EVA Chrisnik to collect the report. Getting a scientist out would require an EVA someone from the command capsule first so that they're out of the way. That's too much shuffling about this near to the surface. 25 seconds from impact. Let's start slowing down a bit. Starting to see some lights on the surface. As you can see, I decided not to jettison the transfer stage. It still has well over 250 meters per second left in it. I don't want to just throw it away. So we're just going to put it down on the engine bell here. I think I'll best slow down a little bit. About 17 seconds to impact, so slower down. There we go. 30 seconds now. According to better burn time, about 100 meters to go. All oh, this goes so slowly. <laughs> I was thinking of speeding this up, but you know, for those that have never done it, this gives you what landing on Gilly is all about. Okay. Oh, no, no longer getting any information from burner, better burn time. It figures we are pretty close here. Oh, we are just about 20 meters from the surface. I think this is going to be our final little push. And I want to be super gentle. Because uh, clearly we're not putting it on any landing gear. Well, I think this is more slope than I think. Okay, we are down. A little bit of blurping coming from X Science as it felt we were on the surface, at least momentarily. And then I think we bounced. <laughs> so uh, I am just sort of pitching it back here. Very gently. I'm going to lay it down here on the surface. And I guess there's a bit of irony given my just recently talking about my pseudo sense of realism and now kind of throwing this off right out the door some people might be saying hypocrisy more than irony but I think my cheapness <laughs> my cheapness is stronger than my sense of realism I think is what this is all about and I just can't throw away good fuel if I don't have to oh we are just about Oh, I think that's it. I'm actually pushing it down to the surface. Just gonna let it fall. We're down. And we're not sliding. So that's gonna be it. There's clearly a whole crap load of science here for us to collect. But before we get to that, uh, I think we need to commemorate the occasion with a little bit of a flag planting ceremony. So we'll get Tamley our mission commander out here first. She will EVA over. You know, I was just realizing she's in near space right now, so I didn't have to EVA uh, Chris Nick, my engineer, back there while we were on our descent. I could have EVA'd um, wait to her down here on the surface and then just done this with the scientist, which I inevitably will be doing. 
and just got my uh, EVA report in near space then. Oh my gosh, she is falling just so slowly. And there we go, we are down. And of course, we'll bring out everybody before we actually... Oh my, wait, 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 she's bouncing a bit. <laughs> this Gilly's here for those of you that think that Minmus has light gravity. I'm really, really tempted actually just to do a jump. Um... But I don't think I have the patience to wait for the Kerbal to come back down. <laughs> so I don't think I'm going to do it. Okay, well anyway, we got everybody out here eventually. And we're planting them. Oh, we seem to have pushed Tamley off of the ground. Just the force of sticking the flag into the dirt, I suppose, did that. Maybe I can get the message in before she touches down. Oh my gosh, I'm not going to get this in with my typing skills, that's for sure. Kegel 7. Tamily, Luya, and Chrisnik, and Diltop. Diltop. There we go. Oh, she's down. They should have given us anchors for this mission. Oh, and by the way, and I'm not sure in which update this happened, but uh, right now, if you plant one flag, you actually get... All the Kerbals get the experience for planting the flag, so there's no reason to plant multiple flags anymore. And as Luya here collects science, if you take a look at my vessel, it is actually very slowly sliding down the hill. <laughs> Maybe I should get Tamley aboard? Maybe that will help. Uh, stabilize it but of course we got ourselves a ton of science to collect then we're gonna hop over to Gilly's Highlands and collect a ton more science and then we gotta think about getting these folks back home to Kerbin and not just these folks some of you might recall that I have another four Kerbals that are on their way to Dresden in fact they are very very close to crossing into Drez's sphere of influence so we will most certainly be seeing them next episode in fact although we got a lot still to do I am still aiming for next episode to be the final concluding episode of this series should be exciting lots of stuff happening but for now I think I'm gonna be drawing this episode to a close I hope to see you next time where I will be attempting to bring all of my Kerbals back home safely. I hope to see you then.